Let's get right to our first panel uh, this morning. And uh, as they, uh, our panelists uh, make their way to the stage here, I'm going to um, go ahead and, and introduce them. The panel is entitled Academic Excellence and the USD Experience. And what we hope to do with this session is to, um, to give, give you a, a little further insight into the, the wonderful academic environment Dr. Sullivan uh, alluded to here, to talk about the ways that we help students from the moment that they set foot on campus uh, through a variety of programs, both in the classroom and outside the classroom, uh, the way that we provide the wonderful residential community that is a, a, a real strong component of our, um, of our undergraduate experience, and uh, again, as, as Dr. Sullivan mentioned, what this investment is really all about is helping to make sure that our students are successful when they leave our campus, and so um, we, will, we will address that as well. Let me introduce to you our, our panelists, and then they will each come up uh, here to the podium for a few minutes to talk about uh, their particular uh, area of expertise, and then we will open things up for some questions and answers before we get you on your way for a tour. Uh, we are delighted to have with us, uh, to my immediate left, uh, Dr. Uh, Michelle Boudreas, Associate Professor of Marine Science and Environmental Studies. Um, Dr. Boudreas is also the Chair of the University's Sustainability Task Force and has been very involved with our first year experience and preceptorial programs, which you will no doubt hear a little bit more about. Uh, we also have um, Mr. Merrick Marino, Assistant Dean of Student Affairs. Uh, Merrick is actually a two-time graduate of the university, uh, got his um, bachelor's degree and his um, MED uh, here in, in 1996. He's currently co-chair of the First Year Experience Committee uh, and the Second Year Experience Committee. He supervises the Office of Student Learning Initiatives, including peer advising, fresh at USD, and uh, other online resources to help students su be successful. Also joining us is Dr. Diane Ismirian, Assistant Dean of Residential Life. Uh, Diane has been at the university for 10 years and uh, she actually received her bachelor's degree from Wells College in upstate New York and re recently received her uh, PhD degree right here from USD in our School of Leadership and uh, Education Sciences. And we're also joined by Linda Scales, the Director of Career Services, a very important office on this campus that you will want to get to know. Linda has been the Director of Career Services here since 1978 and has helped countless students uh, as they began to uh, prepare for their careers after USD. So with that, uh, I again thank all of our panelists. Let me turn things over to Dr. Bedreas to get us started. Good morning once again. Um, and I would I like to take, take you through a tour a little bit of how the faculty view academic excellence at USD and I think why USD to us is a place where we want your students to come and work with us as faculty. So the first thing I will tell you from our perspective, and I talk to a lot of prospective parents and a lot of prospective students who come to talk to me about marine science and environmental studies, which is my obviously my specialty discipline. The first thing I think we do very well is work one-on-one -on -one with students. It's probably the most important resource you will get at USD. We are the ones teaching the classes. We are the ones in the lab with the students. We're the ones where we stay with the students in class. Actually, on my way over here, I was talking to one of my students, giving them advice for the classes to choose for next semester. So we talk to them all the time. The classes are kept in a small size. This means that we get to know the students well. By the way, for the students, that means we get to know you well. So if you miss or you fall asleep, we know you miss or you <laughs> fell asleep. But we actually, therefore, connect well with the students. And I think that's what lends to a very rich academic experience for the faculty. At the freshman level, the classes are kept very small. You're in the preceptorial program, which I'll get back to in a moment, where the classes tend to be between 12 and 18 or 20 students. You're with this faculty member this semester. You're learning the material in a class. In addition to that, you're getting ad academic advice from this person. And if it works and you stay in, that, in the major with that faculty member, they become your advisor for four years, at which point they help you navigate USD, they help you navigate graduate school, career services, we send you over to Lynn to help. We talk to all the other people on campus, and so we work very closely with the students from the time they get here to the time they leave here, and in fact, even after they leave, they'll come back to us and ask for letters of recommendation. So we do have a very close relationship with students, and I think to me, that's the number one experience from the academic side of USD, is this very close connection to the, to the students. Um, the second thing about the academic experience is we have very highly qualified faculty. 
We are recruiting a lot of young faculty who are dynamic. We are faculty who want to be at USD. And that's a very important statement for, for me to say. That is, there are faculty who are well experienced with research, who are, are well known in their field. Uh, and you can pick any field you want, from business to literature to art history to the sciences. And they want to be at USD because they want to teach. They want to balance the concepts of teaching and research and teacher teaching and scholarship. And so our faculty are research active. They do work, they write books, they write articles. Um, in the sciences, we take them out. The sciences here are very hands-on. And so from my perspective as a science faculty, one of the reasons why our alums are successful is they leave USD not only with a strong science background and a strong liberal arts background, but they also have a lot of hands-on skills. They actually learn how to do science and we've been very successful in placing our students once they leave. Now, that's not our fault, that's the students' fault. Of course, if they do very well and they, they do well in their classes, it becomes much easier for us to place them. But we certainly give them the skills they need to be able to do well when they leave USD. Uh, in the sciences, for example, we do labs from the time you start as a freshman to the time you leave as a senior. The labs are designed to teach you how to use the instrumentation, designed to teach you to go to the field. We take our students with us in the field, they learn how to do research. And so they're very successful, then they leave. And all the dis disciplines are doing that. There are internship programs across all the disciplines. The third piece of importance, as far as the academic experience, is the liberal arts concepts of USD. I think this provides the opportunities for students to be very well balanced when they leave. They can follow the passion they want for their major, but they get to learn about all the other disciplines. They get the skills to do public speaking. They get the skills to learn how to write well, how to think well, how to speak a different language. Um, they get to see the connections in many cases between their chosen field and other disciplines. In particular, one thing that's happening more and more is we're starting to do more interdisciplinary experiences as well, both on the research side and on the teaching side. And one actually of my goals as the, one of the academic directors of sustainability is for us to use that as a theme to connect students from business, from the, from the humanities, from the social sciences and from the natural science to learn how many of the things in the world are really interconnected. And so we, something we pride ourselves at USD to be able to work together and provide that experience to students. Um, for the freshman students, one of the most important experiences is the preceptorial program. You'll hear a little bit more about the first year experience from Merrick. But the preceptorial program is a program in which a, a freshman will be assigned a, a faculty member. If your student knows what they would like to do, either they're for sure they know what they want to do or they have an idea, they will therefore get a preceptor in their discipline from the very beginning. This faculty member is one who's wants to work with freshmen. There are programs. Uh, we have some planning and some training for these faculty members to do work well with freshman students. In addition to teaching the class that they're in, this faculty member is there to help them with their advising for the following semester, to help them navigate all the processes of USD, to help them adjust to life on campus and life away from home. Uh, many of us work with student affairs in programs. Merrick and I are co-chairs, actually, of the Fresh at USD program. Merrick comes from the student affairs side. I'm coming from the academic side. These are additional programs even to this preceptorial system. So we're set up here to try to help the freshman student adjust to life on campus, adjust to the demands of college. For the students, things really are different. My students are all well prepared this year. They all came in and their first exam was a bit of a lesson for them. And I didn't do this on purpose, it just happened that way. But it's a good lesson to see that you do need a support system to do well at, on campus and it is set up at USD with the advising system and the preceptorial system. Uh, as you'll hear more from Merrick, there are connections as well outside of academics to student affairs, so I think we make a very good team in getting students ready. The academic environment at USD is an intellectually challenging one. It's designed to make you think. It's designed to make to learn, to have you learn things that you'll find interesting, maybe to have you learn something you didn't think was interesting, but when you, uh, you're again, you get through it from us, you'll learn that it's something pretty cool to learn. Um, and I think in many ways, because we work so closely with students, when you come here, you have a very good chance of succeeding when you leave. Good morning, everyone. And I understand um, this session is being recorded, so good afternoon, good evening. Hope you're enjoying your midnight snack to those of you watching this online at some later point. Um, I, when we do these sessions, I always find it somewhat ironic that we do this large presentation um, in a setting that you would never find if you came to USD as a student. Uh, we don't have large lecture halls like this for classes. Uh, we don't have um, online delivery for um, the majority of undergraduate classes. Uh, we are all about in-person um, 
direct contact with students. Um, so what I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit is kind of the big picture of what USD has to offer, and if you choose to attend USD, what you can expect from this institution. It's something that we call the first year experience. Um, it's not unique to USD to have a first year experience. Essentially, every university has a f what you would call a first year experience. It's everything that the university does um, to coordinate the, the education and outside of class experience for students. Um, but how we do it is really unique to us, and we feel like it's uh, a really special uh, way of organizing our first year for students. And I'm going to talk a little bit also about our second year experience, not to forget our second year students. We don't forget about them after they finish their first year. Um, there's three main themes that I want to talk about related to the first year experience uh, that kind of shape how we look at the first year experience. Um, three concepts. The first of which is, is a concept that goes back many years um, in higher education called challenge and support. We like to shape our first year experience based on those two concepts. Um, knowing that um, if, if there is too much of either, it can be stifling. If it is too challenging without enough support, um, students can feel overwhelmed. If there's too much support um, and not enough challenge, students um, may not grow and develop in the ways that we hope that they will. So we're looking at building our first year experience around both of those concepts and balancing those concepts. Next is, is the idea of personalized education. Uh, we build our first year experience around, really around people. Um, there are um, several dedicated individuals, faculty members, staff members, other students, who are focused on the success and well-being of every first-year student. Uh, so we create a network of people to help students in their transition to college. Um, and then the last is innovation and creativity. This is where we get a toot our own horn. Um, we do some really innovative, unique things that we think um, you would only find at the University of San Diego. You won't find anywhere else, and I'll talk a little bit about those things. Um, before I describe the specific components of our first year experience, um, just want to talk a little bit about why, why we focus so much energy on the first year. Um, the first year is really essential in getting off to a good start, and it shapes the rest of the college experience. If students get off to a good start, the rest seems to follow. Um, if students get off uh, to a tough start, uh, hit some bumps in the road, um, too much time often is spent on recovering or making up for the tough, that rough start. Um, we know that also early impressions really do make a, a big difference. Um, so we want students to get off to the best possible start. We're committed to, from day one, helping students move toward graduation and earning a, a degree from the University of San Diego. Um, and we want to do everything that we can to help students do that. Um, a large part of that requires the student um, to, take, to take kind of the lion's share of the initiative in making, making that happen. But we're, we see ourselves as kind of partners along the way. So with that, what do we do for the first year experience? Uh, we build our first year experience at USD around two core components. We call them our two pillars. Uh, Dr. Boudria talked about one of those, the preceptorial program. It's a course that all entering freshmen will take in which their, their faculty instructor for that course um, is their advisor. Um, also paired with the preceptorial course is a preceptorial assistant. It's kind of the student version of the preceptorial faculty. It's a continuing, successful, upper division student um, who uh, can serve as a peer mentor. Uh, they've been through the ropes, they've been through the transition, they made it through, they've been successful at USD, and they can share that wisdom and experience with students. So every preceptoral course has both a faculty member and a continuing student um, to support students in their transition. The other core component or pillar is residential life. And Dr. Ismirian is gonna talk about residential life in a little bit, so I'm not gonna go into too much about what we do because she's gonna um, describe our residential life experience for first-year students um, in depth. In addition to our two core components or pillars, um, we have a, uh, uh, an additional set of um, resources programs to support students in their transition to USD. Uh, we have an orientation program that we call Torero Days, which is the four days prior to classes starting in the fall semester. Um, that is a very comprehensive introduction to the university, both to fellow students, to academic life, um, um, to help students be prepared uh, to get off to a good start. We have a series of workshops, Dr. Boudria mentioned, called Fresh at USD. Um, this fall semester, we have 50 workshops. There's usually anywhere for, from two to four every week of the fall semester, covering the gamut of issues that we know students encounter, will encounter in their first year. Sometimes they don't know they're going to encounter them, but we do because we see it year in and year out. Things like time management, study skills, after they get their first midterm back and realize 
um, how they approach studying for tests in high school may not work as well here. Um, so we offer that workshop right after midterm grades usually come out. Um, other things like choosing a major, um, uh, relationships, uh, the variety of issues that students encounter in their first year. Um, this year we have a new program uh, for out-of-state initiatives. Um, I'm not sure if there are any of you in the audience who are coming from out of state, um, but we find that that's a unique transition to USD, students who come, come from outside of California. So we have uh, out of state regional dinners to help students from out of state connect with other students from their home state um, and continuing students who have come from their same location um, who can provide some guidance about that unique transition of, of coming far from home. Uh, we also have a program uh, that, uh, called MapWorks. Um, it's, it stands for Making Achievement Possible. And that is a way to get an early sense. It's a transition survey that's given out in the third week of the fall semester to get an early sense of how students are doing. And it helps us identify students who are, who are struggling right off the bat and gives us an opportunity to reach out to those students and see if we can um, assist them um, in addressing whatever challenges are, um, are arising early in their um, time at USD. So that's how we shape our first year experience. I want to talk a little bit about the second year experience. And this is where kind of our innovation and creativity, I think, really comes to life. Um, for our second year experience, um, this year, for the first time, uh, we are offering our feature component for the second year experience, which we're calling SYE Abroad, or second year experience, SYE Abroad. And all we're doing this, it's the largest scale study abroad uh, program that we are attempting to um, put into place. And our goal is to really take as much of, if not the entire second year class, so current freshmen next year in their intercession during January, to they have the option of going to five different locations, um, Barcelona, Florence, Paris, Oxford, or Ifran, uh, Morocco. And they can choose one of those locations to attend. And um, they would go for three weeks during the January intercession of their second year as the feature component of the second year experience and take a three unit course. Uh, this is also a very comprehensive program. We're doing this in a very unique way where the program actually begins when students sign up in the fall of their, uh, uh, the fall of their freshman year. And in the spring semester, there will be get togethers with the other students who will be going to that same location to get to know one another, begin to prepare for that journey. In the fall semester of their second year, all the students going abroad as part of SYU Abroad uh, will take a one-unit global studies course, a common experience to prepare them um, to go out into the world. And then the three weeks in January when they actually are in these locations taking uh, a course abroad. Um, and then when they return, the idea is that we'll have reunion events to kind of reconnect with everyone who shared this experience um, and, and kind of discuss and, and process what it, what it was about. So that gives you a general overview of, of what we do and what is really unique, distinctive about USD's first year experience and second year experience. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to start this morning's remarks with just um, letting you know what we see as our purpose in residential life, which is to really ensure a living environment that enhances your ability to learn here at USD. And it's also a great place to be in community with other students. Um, residents gain important friendships and are, and are able to engage in campus life in very unique and special ways. We do require housing for our first year students unless they are commuting from home, and we have four unique residential areas. Up here on the hill, there is um, Maher Hall and Camino Founders. Camino Founders offers double, triple, and quad rooms, and they, it is a shared um, bathroom um, facility. Camino is male, and Founders is female. In Maher, we also have doubles, triples, quads, and there's a bathroom in each room. The east side of the building is male, and the west side is female. Approximately half of our class lives up here on the hill, and the other half um, lives down in the valley, in our areas known as Missions A and Missions B. Missions B has singles and doubles, along with shared bathrooms, and Missions A is actually suite-style housing, um, eight persons per suite, with two bathrooms and an individual lounge in each suite. Each of these areas has some common spaces for programming, and Camino Founders and Maher, being up here on the hill, are conveniently located to the Student Life Pavilion and most of the classrooms, but the Valley also has its own missions cafe and, and fitness center. 
We encourage students to stay on campus and therefore after the first year we have several on-campus apartment areas. And specifically it's worth noting that the Alcala Vista apartments are, are the home to our second year experience programming that Merrick spoke about. To ensure the, the best living learning communities possible, we have some core components to our, our residential life program. And first of all, I want to mention community standards, which are the rules of conduct decide, designed to make our living learning um, environments conducive to <laughs> people being able to study. But we also have a really strong emphasis on community expectations. We expect our students to really uphold the values of USD and have high expectations for us as far as their living environment. So what you can expect is high quality facilities and services such as newspaper um, readership program, centralized desk areas where, where students, staff are available to answer questions and serve as resources, and also secure, secure access with um, Onity key card access. But what makes residential life at USD really special is, is our caring and well-trained staff. And what you could expect if you choose to attend USD is um, specially trained resident assistants that are student peer leaders and they really get to know their residents on an individual basis. We have high expectation and have some tools to help us with this including a Project Blue community development model and the MapWorks program that Merrick mentioned. We also have community directors which are professional live-in staff in each of our residential areas and resident ministers and resident faculty who do specialized program programming and also serve as resources for our resident students. In our residence halls, we also have a very active residence hall association program, which is the, the residential student government. And they provide a lot of really fun activities and programs for our students, but also have an important advocacy role letting us know about the students' residential experience. Residential life at USD also has several residential learning communities, um, and these are thematic by area, and they include an option for honor students to live together in the Valley Housing Area. As I'm sure you've noted from other um, remarks that you've heard today, sustainability is very important at USD. And so we have several programs in the residence halls to ensure that we're being as sustainable as we can be. And one that I really wanted to mention this morning because it's unique is we actually have a student garden behind the Crossroads building in the Valley area, which was a, a student initiative. So to conclude, I just want to mention that all of this information is available on our website with a lot more details about the various RLCs and locations of our housing. And um, so I would encourage you to make sure to check out our website. Thank you. Good morning, I'm from the Career Center, and I'm here to tell you that careers don't happen at the end of your college experience. They start at the beginning. And I love talking to parents and high school seniors because I see everyone more interested in careers than ever before. So I like to get to you early so that I can get everyone involved in this process of career preparation. And if you decide to come to USD, that we want to get together with you over the entire four years that you're here to help you make your career dreams come true. Because a career really is a process. Developing a career, deciding on graduate school or getting a job is not something that just magically happens after four years. We would like to think that as a Catholic university we have special pull, but the lightning bolt does not strike you and say, here's what you should do with your life or here's a job on a silver platter. It really depends on the effort you put in, the time, the involvement that you take advantage of, and many other factors. Career search is a process, not an event. Figuring out who you are is probably one of the biggest challenges all of us face in life. Um, Tavis Smiley has a great quote. He's the author, TV and radio journalist. I think that one of the biggest mistakes we make in our culture is that for so long we have asked kids, what they want to be when they grow up. The real question ought to be, who do you want to be when you grow up? The what question speaks to occupation. The who question speaks to character development. That quotation pretty much sums up part of our philosophy here. We want to work with students and help them define who they want to be in conjunction with what they want to become. That's part of what USD's holistic, values-oriented education is all about. 
In particular, we in career services serve as students linked to professional development, keeping in mind both the who and the what questions. So I'd like to share with you today a couple of examples that I've seen of students who've graduated in the last couple of years that describe how we personalize our work with students on the topic of career preparation because everyone is different and they end up with different experiences here at USD. Uh, we encourage students to come to career services right off the bat. Some classes have us come in within the first week or two of school and focus on presentations about how to develop yourself while you're here, create a freshman resume, uh, look at your majors and your minors and the choices that you might be facing, uh, getting involved in activities, deciding on study abroad. Um, so let's look at the first student. This student interviewed widely for jobs the last semester of her senior year, and I first saw her when she came by to discuss with me her multiple offers. I think she had four, and the decisions that she was facing. So I asked her, what's the secret to your success? How did you end up with four offers, all of them, I believe, over $60,000 to start? And she said, you know, I came into the Career Center every semester while I was here. I made my first appointment the second week of classes, and I just wanted to touch base with someone. I wanted to focus and frame questions for myself. The experimentation came in when she changed her major multiple times and actually ended up double majoring with an additional minor. I would say she was pretty successful in the end because she ended up choosing the job she wanted the most, even though it didn't pay the most money. The next example is success through identifying strengths and evaluating goals. And this student had a very unique situation. He came in as a freshman with the sole intention of becoming an engineer. He had planned to do this his whole life. His parents were invested in this goal. And he started out with great hopes and got a D his first semester. He just felt he wasn't doing well. He talked to the professors, did everything we would have told him to do to be successful, and he wasn't finding that he was successful in engineering. So he came to me and said, what shall I do? I suggested that he take some of the career assessments that we offer as part of the package here at USD for students who wish to take advantage of it, and just talk about his strengths. We did that. We talked about the quantitative skills that he had and the analytical skills. And he kept saying, but my parents are going to be so upset. I didn't see him for another couple of years, at which point I found he was making straight A's as an accounting major. He got an internship after his junior year and a job offer before he even started his senior year with one of the big four accounting firms. Another unexpected success for him. The third example is a good demonstration of how personal growth and development can take many different forms. I first saw this student completely after graduation. She had not come in once during the four years here. Um, and she was working on her very first resume and her, a view of what kind of job search strategy should I take. Uh, it turns out that she hadn't come in and hadn't done a resume because she had been preparing for participation in the Olympics, in the Summer Olympics. So she came in right after those concluded and felt, I'm at a disadvantage, I'm so distressed, I haven't had an internship, I haven't had the opportunity to gain work experience in the summer, I'm not like the other students. That was an opportunity for us to discuss her and evaluate, essentially, her leadership and teamwork on the athletic team that she was involved with, her success and dedication in sports, um, what she had done over the past four years with her major and the personal growth that she had experienced as she practiced for her sport, and be able to articulate those strengths in an interview. Much to her surprise, she went to her first interview a week later and was offered a job on the spot in the very first interview which is extremely unusual. So there are successes through many different channels. We all develop skills, interests, and value sets which play out in life, and how we pursue these areas helps us determine where we find ourselves when everyone starts to ask, so what are you going to do when you graduate from college? Career Services offers assistance at any or all times from 
entrance to USD as a freshman through the alumni status that I just mentioned. We do one-on-one -on -one and classroom consultations. We see you for free for life as alumni on career issues and career transition issues. To assist students here on campus in the career area, Career Services offers the assessments that I described, help in choosing a major, resume reviews, mock interviews where we sit down and practice what you're going to say, help in finding internships, a resource library, career information on our website, hundreds of job listings, graduate school essay critiques and a graduate school fair, on-campus interviewing opportunities, job fairs, and employer presentations. So my advice to students at entrance tends to focus on these areas. I strongly encourage you to get involved in something in addition to academics while still maintaining the focus on academics, connected with students of similar interests, whether those in professional organizations on campus related to your major, or sports, or fraternities and sororities, or university ministry, or research. Whatever it is, employers want to see that you can keep more than one ball in the air. Second, I'd like to see students learn the importance of building personal relationships with our alumni, with the speakers who come to campus, with faculty in their offices, with community service learning in the community, and with involvement through their clubs and organizations. Third, I encourage students to choose meaningful summer jobs and internships, ones that will expose them to career fields that they are interested in pursuing, such as filing during the summer for a law firm or an internship that involves, for instance, in, commu in communication studies, interning with a magazine publisher one semester and perhaps a literary agency another semester, which leads to the fourth point, seeking as many internships as possible. A recent publication claims that nearly three quarters of all college students do internships today compared to one in 36 in 1980. Um, internships are encouraged from the junior year on and many students do three, four, five internships. Lastly, I like to see students develop a focus on what they want to contribute to the world, whether it's a broad-based or a niche skill. What you can do and why does it matter to you and why does it matter to others is a focus here at USD. USD seeks to attract students who care. Some students will develop skills to analyze financial statements and some will develop skills to work with troubled youth. Some will go into the sciences and some into the arts. In the end, we want to prepare students to contribute in an ethical and meaningful way in their chosen professions. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. As, as I mentioned in my initial comments, that initial original vision for the university, the idea that people matter, um, the idea that uh, we continue to pursue academic excellence that the liberal arts are as important and as vibrant as ever, and there is a premium placed on, on quality teaching. Uh, I think our panelists did a wonderful job of, of conveying real examples of how that is being carried out today. So again, thank you all very much for your, um, for your comments.